God's will for you. I've said it many times that there is, and this is this is my opinion. This is not scripture, but I believe that there are two wills. There is one will of God that is for the general body. Everybody is supposed to do this. All Christians, all believers are supposed to do this, but then there's one that God has a will <clears throat> that is targeted specifically for you. It's got your name on it. This is what you and you alone are supposed to do because God has set your plan in motion. That's why he saved you. That's why he's formed a relationship with you. And there's something that you and only you can do I can't do what God's will is for you. Nobody else can. And you must fulfill that will of God for you if you want to be prosperous. If you want to have God's best, you need to do God's will specifically for you. So now this here, even though it says God's will for you, this is still going to be more generalistic in its nature. But as we go along, we'll be picking out certain things that you will be able to understand and learn how to find God's will that is specifically for you. I think a lot of people, they just don't know what is God's will for them. You know, uh, a lot of people don't know what God's will is for the entire church, for all the body of Christ. So we're going to do some study in this. this, this these aren't real long, but I'm going to tell you now, there's a lot of scripture. Now, the scripture that I have, and I'm telling you now, that's in the presentation is only a little bit. The majority of the scriptures that I've got is going to be on your handout that I'll send to you. Because if I put all these scriptures on here, we'd be here an hour and a half. It's a lot. Okay? So we're going to hit key scriptures as we do our teaching, but when I send out uh, your hard copy, you need to take that and then research all of the scriptures that you're going to find that's in there, okay? So let us begin. Uh, the introduction, what is God's will for you? Of course, if you're not saved, the answer is rather obvious. Get saved. But if you are saved, what is God's will for you in your life? Sometimes the scriptures are quite clear, as in passages like 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing and everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we all should be rejoicing. We should all be praying without ceasing. We need to give thanks in everything. Uh, I kind of want to back a little bit. When it talks about praying without ceasing, it does not mean that that's all you do is pray. When it talks about praying without ceasing, meaning you should always have an open line of communication with God so that when you pray, you know your prayers are not only heard, but you know your prayers are answered. Mm -hmm. One scripture that I know and we'll, I'm sure we'll get that as we continue to do in this teaching. Uh, that is, uh, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What is iniquity? And that's sin. So let's, I cleanse myself of the sin, which we know that if we confess our faults and our sins, and he's righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. So we need to constantly be aware of what we do that we know is not what God wants. We know it's sin. We need to uh, speak it out, get it cleansed, so we can always keep that line of communication. Always, You should always be able to pray. That's what it means when it talks about pray without ceasing. Always be able to get a prayer through. Doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, because there's going to be times when, uh, when there's uh, adversarial situations that will cause you to, you know, be in a state of mind where it might be hard to pray. But that's when you have to do like David did and, and encourage yourself in the Lord. Fight through that. Become, uh, de deal with that endurance part that we talk about all the time, that power that you've been given so that you can break through and pray. Sometimes they tell you just with them. 
Yeah, it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out prayer. I talked about it Sunday. You know, sometimes it's just hell. You know, but you need to make sure even when you're crying out for your help that you've got that line of communication that is open, that you know he's going to hear you and he's going to respond. Prayer is a dialogue. It's not a monologue. Monologue means I, I carry both conversations. And that's not how work, prayer works. I talk to him, he talks back. If there's a problem with you praying and not hearing from him, the problem ain't God, the problem is you. Ah, we'll deal with some of that too. First Thessalonians 4, 3, God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. 1 Peter 2.15, for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. This one is very important because we find ourselves falling prey to acting more like the world than we do like God, like Christ. When we act more like the world, the world is not planning on doing good. The flesh is not planning on doing good. Therefore, we know that there are those that love to tell you as a Christian how you're supposed to live. You're a Christian. You ain't supposed to say that. You're a Christian. You ain't supposed to go there. You're a Christian. You ain't supposed to have that. So by doing good, you shut their mouths up anyway. Because they can't, there's nothing that they can say against you. Bible tells you, don't let your good be evil spoken of, or what you think is good that really ain't good, because you haven't really consulted God to find out if what you good is good. We're going to build a whole lot of this. I, I, I really like this subject here. Uh, such passages do not exhaust what is God's will, but this, this series of lessons will focus on attention on what is clearly stated as the will of God for you. Stating, starting with 1 Thessalonians 5.16, where we learn that God wants you to rejoice always. Rejoice in life, number one. To rejoice in your youth, Ecclesiastes 11.9. Young people, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in. But remember that you must give an account to God for everything you do. Youth is not always about age. I know folks who are my age, but are very young at heart. They're very... Um, I don't know. Well, well, athletic. They, they, they are. They're, they're constantly doing things. I got a friend, uh, 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 Billy. You know, I talk about Bruce Black. Man, we're the same age, and he does things I, I ain't even think about doing. Is it a contract? He's, you know, he, he. There's nothing for him. In fact, he came over and we built our steps. <laughs> I mean, this guy. I mean, he, he's, he's an energizer bunny. He's constantly doing things, constantly building stuff, constantly working. It's, it's, it's like that. So, you know, it's, it's, you may be, have youth in your, in your activities that has nothing to do with your age. But still, we got to remember, we still have to give an account for everything that we do in this life. So even in your youth or in your zest for life, don't do a lot of folly. Or those things that lead you to do the wrong thing. Constantly keep your mind on God and enjoy your life. He's telling you, enjoy every minute of it. Take it all in. Number two, to rejoice in your work. Ecclesiastes 2.24 says, so I decided there is nothing better than to enjoy food and drink and to find satisfaction in work. I realized that 
These pleasures are from the hand of God. There's a difference between a job and a career. I learned that. A job is something that you just do in order to sustain your livelihood. A career is something that you want to build upon to leave a legacy for those that come after you. It's got your name on it. You can be proud of it. Others can rejoice in you in your accomplishments because you set these goals as it being something that you want to last even after you're gone. You build something. That's the difference between a job and a career. Sad thing is most of us just got jobs. Yes. No. Okay. Um, but I do think, like you said, not everyone gets the privilege in this life to have a career. Correct. The great majority of people get a job Right. And yet, still, you can choose your attitude mm -hmm. about your job at the time. And I still think that you That's can right. leave a legacy sometimes yeah. because people are always watching you. Yes. And if you claim Jesus, no yes. matter what you're doing, if yes. they see a difference in the way that you treat others, they see your work ethic, yes. they... Um, they see that you work to excellence, yes. um, that you are responsible, and that you are fair, then still, yeah. oh, definitely. still That's there right. is worth That's right. that. I did, I, I, and, and I'm, a, I'm a recipient of that. Um, I would go into jobs starting at the very bottom, and I always ended up in a managerial position. Uh, the last one that I had that I really can say it was started out as a job. I just, I needed a job. I needed some money. But it turned out to be such a blessing as when I worked for Emerson because I got a chance to travel around the world. Um, I'm still in contact with people after leaving there. It's been 10 years. You know, I'm still in contact with people. Matter of fact, Heather and Billy are here with us. You know, I mean, and 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 my name still carries after I'm long gone from this place. I did the same thing at the Limited. You know, I worked there for 10 years and I, I started out part-time like everybody else. I ended up in management and I won awards and there's things that my name still, I know, is still there because I set some precedents and I set, you know, some things in motion that still carries on today. And it's all because I know what God did for me. And like he says, it's from the hand of God. I tell people, I'm not that smart, but God is. So when you something, you're able to be blessed because of it. Somebody say something? Yeah. Malcolm. Yes. How long has it been since you worked? Um... Let's see. I worked not at, counting Uber. I mean, that's all right. I left. I left uh, Anthem. Well, I left Emerson in 2013. I went to um, Anthem in 14. I left there actually in was it 16? I think I was only there two years. And you shut that down. So it's been what five years. Five years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then I and, and I really start pastoring, so I ain't stopped working. <laughs> but yeah, having having a secular job, it's been five years since I've actually. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. That's okay. Don't retire. Well, but that's true. <laughs> five years since I had a Pastors don't retire. No, never, never. Uh, number three, to rejoice in life and wife. <laughs> uh, a lot of this is Ecclesiastes 9, 7 through 9. So go ahead, eat your food with joy and drink your wine with a happy heart. For God approves of this. Wear fine clothes with a splash of cologne. 
Live happily with the woman you love through all the meaningless days of That's life right. that God has given you under the sun. The wife God gives you is your reward for all your earthly toil. So I'm a reward. Sorry. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I got fourth, fourth place. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'll let that one go. Just, just, just we just gonna keep on going with this. One. Um, uh, number four, to rejoice in the things God has given us. First Timothy six seventeen. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives all we need for our enjoyment. And of course, we are to rejoice responsibly. Ecclesiastes 12, 1. Don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and say life is not pleasant anymore. So this was the introduction. Well, well that was A. Uh, B is rejoice in salvation. We had uh, rejoice always and now rejoice in salvation. Uh, to rejoice knowing that you are saved. Luke 10, 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Uh, this is when uh, Jesus had sent out the 12 to go out into the world, and he had anointed them. And they came back and they were saying how even the devils tremble uh, at, at, at your name. You know, so they were, they were, you know, spreading the gospel, you know, even while Jesus was alive, you know, they were, they were out there, you know, Jesus sent them out two by two. They came back and he's saying, don't be, you know, so happy just because the spirits are subject to you. And rather than that, be more rejoiceful. But your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what's much more important than you thinking somebody that, that, that the evil spirit's going to bow to you. Uh, to rejoice as a king, as a kingdom quality. Uh, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Number three, to rejoice as fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So we're telling you about rejoicing. These are the things that we rejoice for. Um, it is clearly the will of God that you rejoice always. Now let's consider why. Uh, number two. You need to rejoice always for physical and emotional strength. Anxiety weighs one down. Oh my goodness, it really does. Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Um, my goodness, we worry way more than we are supposed to. It brings on the anxiety. Because that worry is also steeped in a lot of fear. And we know God's not giving us that spirit. So along with that, it, uh, that's what also is saying. It's what helps cause depression. We know that depression has also physical and mental conditions with it. But we're talking about the type of depression that this child of God should be able to fight with through the word. A good word makes it glad. Number two, a glad heart raises the spirit. Proverbs 15, 13. Merry heart makes a joyful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Number three, a joyful heart is like good medicine. Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. Um, that's one of the reasons why they kicked me out of ICU. 
My first one in the ICU when I had my blood clots. Um, I, like I said, I didn't know. You know, they're telling me what's wrong with me, and I never felt anything wrong with me. I just knew it was, you know, I was very short of breath. I was, you know, it was just uncomfortable. I was very weak, but I still had, you know, it, it, was, it was really amazing, especially when we were in the emergency room. And me and Michelle and my brother, we were in there cracking jokes. And my blood pressure was constantly going down. But whenever we would laugh and all, my blood pressure would come up. And it was amazing to watch that. You know, we were just in there just having a good time. I'm in the emergency room and doctors and nurses are all scrambling around because they're expecting me to kill over any moment. And I'm like, I'm having fun. So why, when they put me in the ICU, I'm sitting in the ICU, you know, and I'm talking to everybody and I'm laughing and I'm having a good time and the nurse is having a good time. And it was like, they're like, look, you can't be in here. This is a place for quiet, reserved folks were sick. Well, I'm like, I'm supposed to be sick? What? You know, I was having a good time. They kicked me out. They put me in a regular room and said, you don't need to be in there. So, but I had a good heart. God, God gave me joy. I was still alive. You know, I bucked the system. They said, when you got this, you're supposed to die. I didn't die. God had a plan. B, for spiritual strength. In the joy of the Lord, there is great strength. Wait a minute. I have to do something. I have to do something. Hold on. Give me one moment. Uh, Nora, will you read that scripture, please? Nehemiah 8.10. And Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. We know that God wants us to have pleasure. God wants us to live in joy. That's why I must talk about us rejoicing. God wants us to always make sure that the things that we do, uh, we not only please him, but he has to want us to turn around and please us as well. So it's his joy that is our strength that gives us that. Number two, when we have joy in what we believe, we abound in hope. Romans 15, verse 13. Bless you. <clears throat> Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And number three, when we are joyful, it helps those around us to be joyful. I really like this one. Second Corinthians 2, 3. That's why I wrote to you as I did. This is Paul. So that when I do come, I won't be grieved by the very ones who ought to give me the greatest joy. Surely you all know that my joy comes from your being joyful. It's like an infectious disease. You ever, you ever, ever been in a situation where somebody starts laughing? You may not even know what they're laughing about, but their laugh can become so infectious that you just start laughing. You don't know what it's for. Uh, but you know, you just it just it, you just start cracking up. Babies are a real good indicator of that. You know, you get a baby, and you can just get a baby that just. Especially, I'm sorry, but my great granddaughter, she just, she's got the greatest little laugh, and she just she breaks it to smile, and it's like, man, you can't help but look at that face and go, wow, man. She smile, you smile. She laugh, you laugh. Yeah. It's the joy that will cause others to be joyful. That great belly laugh. Yeah. Kind of People don't want to be around sourpuss. You know, everybody that's so down and just doing, uh, woe is me, got that black cloud hanging over them all the time, and it's always woe is me. You don't want to be around that. You want to be around the joyful people because that's what gives you joy. That's what helps energize you in your life. 
Our Creator understands the importance of a joyful spirit for, body, for both body and soul. Since He wants us to rejoice always, here are a few thoughts on how you can rejoice always. Number one, or A, in the Lord. It is in the Lord that one finds the ability to rejoice always. Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. When you're, when you're having joy in, 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 in the Lord, you can't be a sourpuss. You know, when you really think of all the things God has done for you, when you really think about blessings he's really given to you, I'm not talking about even the big ones, some of the small things that he does that you know it was him. You know, the blessings, when we start to really concentrate on what God does for us on a daily basis, you ought to have a lot of joy. You know, we, we look at our situations in life and we become so disheartened because we see so much hurt or we don't understand some of the trials and tribulations that we go through. But even in all of that, we're still supposed to rejoice even in our tribulations, even in our troubles. His salvation is a source of much joy, found in Psalms 21, verse 1. How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. God gives us a victory. Yeah, we're supposed to be joyful in all things. And he grants joy to those who please him. Ecclesiastes 2.26. God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him. But if a sinner becomes wealthy, God takes the wealth away and gives it to those who please him. This too is meaningless, like chafing the wind. Chasing the wind. You know, we have to please God. Uh, the Bible says to delight yourself in the Lord. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. So how do we delight him? We delight him when we operate in faith. We operate in trust. And we honor him with the life that we live. How we treat others. How we do good. How we bless others. How we sacrifice our lives so that others can be blessed how we give of ourselves so that others can be blessed. That's how we please him. And he is able to give us what we need. Uh, some important suggestions. Read and feed upon word of God daily. Every day we should be reading some, some uh, a passage of scripture it's so easy because uh, everybody got a cell phone. There's so many apps that send you daily inspiration and word. Uh, we send out stuff every day, scriptures. You know, you can't get on Facebook or, or, or uh, uh, any of these uh, social medias, and somebody's got scripture out there. Yes. So every day we need to feed on God's word, Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Love that scripture. Yes. Yeah. Number two, meditate upon the teachings of Christ and his apostles. A, Jesus spoke that his disciples, Jesus spoke that his disciples' joy might be full. John 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may, be, may remain in you and that your joy may be full. God is always teaching us. He's always giving us examples. He's always feeding into us his life so that we can be full and have direction and guidance 
in the way we should go. He is the example of how we are to live a life for God. B, the apostles wrote that our joy might be full. First John, verse one, uh, chapter one, verse four. These things we write to you that your joy may be full. We sing praises of joy to God. A, certainly we should sing when joyful. James 5, 13. Uh, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. We went over this when we were doing the book of James. Uh, we should always have a, a tune. Whether you can carry it in a bucket or not, <laughs> that don't matter, you know. But from the heart, we sing praises unto God. Uh, number four, uh, spend time with brethren who make us happy. As Titus's joy encouraged Paul, First, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 13. Therefore, we have been comforted in your comfort. We rejoiced exceedingly more for the joy of Titus because his spirit has been refreshed by all by you all. Um, I like spending time with brethren who make us happy. Don't spend a lot of time with people who are going to bring you down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, who got that, like I said, got that, got that. We all know somebody who has a negative personality. Yeah. It's always negative. I don't care how good things are, they're always going to look for something bad to happen. You know, just because it's all good, oh, doom and gloom is right around the corner. Man, you know, man, get away from me. You know, I don't need to hear all that. You know, I need encouragement. I don't need to keep looking for something. Trust me, you look for something bad, you're going to find something bad. So spend your time with the people that you know are going to encourage you, bring joy to your life, add something of quality to your life, and not suck quality out of your life. My former pastor used to call them suckers, vampires, they sucker relationships. So all they do is suck all the joy out of you and leave you in bad straits. Sucker relationships. Sucker relationships. Uh, as Philemon's love and joy refreshed the hearts of others and gave Paul joy. Uh, Philemon 1, verse 7. Your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother. For your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. Number five, lead others to Christ, for they will be a great source, source of joy, as the Thessalonians were to Paul. First Thessalonians 2, verses 19 to 20. Um, after all, what gives us hope and joy? What will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he returns. It is you. Yes, you are our pride and joy. Again, as Philemon was to Paul, I just, same scripture, find it up in B. Then see, as John's converts made him joyful. Uh, three John, actually it's only one chapter, so it's verse four. Uh, I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth. That is such a big one that we know that we've got, we've, we've laid some foundations, we've planted some seeds into our children. When we see that our children are following the Lord because of some things that we've helped them to understand. Now we've got, Masona, we've got children, some follow God, some don't. You know, I would that all of them do. But I'm, it, we're especially joyful for those that we know are following Christ. Because we know that they know the truth. And we pray that those that are not following Christ will one day follow Christ. Even if they don't hear it from me, as long as they hear it, that is my, my prayer. Uh, I had to change that too. The Lord send somebody that they will hear. They may not hear me. They may not understand what I'm trying to say. 
but send somebody that they will hear. Send somebody that they will understand the word and become saved and follow you. It's all in your timing. So the conclusion. Uh, so, so what is the will of God for you? Number one, rejoice always. Uh, a, rejoice always. B, rejoice in the Lord always. C, rejoice in the blessings he has given you. And then D, rejoice in both the physical and spiritual blessings of life. Mm -hmm. Number two, this does not mean you will never suffer hardship. But if it is in service to God, there can be great joy. Matthew 5, 12, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Then B, there can be inexpressible joy. First Peter 1, 6. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. God never said we were not going to experience hardship. Matter of fact, he said that we glory in tribulation, meaning you know that that tribulation is going to work things in you. Patience, endurance, you know, all kinds of things. It's going to help you become the better person that God wants you to be, the better warrior, the more victorious <laughs> soldier for the cross. But you're going to have to go through it. I always said it would be great. As soon as you get saved, God wishes you to heaven. That would be wonderful. But that ain't how it works. You've got things to do here. You have to be a light. You have to be salt. You've got to be effective in the lives of everyone else. And people have to see what God did for you so that they know he can do it for them as well. Uh, even if the hardship we experience are due to the... I don't know why I put that in there. There you go. Of life, life. vicissitudes. Sounds like a singing group. It does, doesn't it? The vicissitudes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can rejoice uh, that we serve a God who offers comfort and hope to endure every Why trial. I don't know, the vicissitudes. I don't want to ask me about What does it mean? It came out of the 60s. All of the, all of the different changes and and uh, uh, you, you, your plans that change on you. You plan this, and things happen. Your detours, your your uh, 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 things that life that happens. Life happens. We still rejoice that we serve a God who offers comfort and hope, even in the midst of these trials. Romans five, three and five. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Oh. Now, hope does not disappoint me because of the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And so let us be diligent to do the will of God. Rejoice always. So this is one of the things that I believe is for the whole body of Christ. We are all supposed to rejoice. That's not just one that's got your name on it. This is one that the body of Christ, we, we are to rejoice. We are to be happy in God. Be, be joyful because God brought you out of darkness and put you in his marvelous light. And know that he has a will for you that's, all, that's for your betterment, not for your harm. My favorite of all favorite scriptures is, in there is, is uh, Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, they're thoughts of good, not of evil, thoughts to give you a hope, thoughts to give you a future. He knows what he has plans for you. Mm -hmm. They are never to cause you sorrow, to cause you grief, to cause you hardship. They're to cause to give you hope, to give you a great future, not just in heaven 
but here on earth as well. So our next lesson, part two, is going to be pray without ceasing. You're going to learn how to do that.